A killer is stalking the waters of South Central Alaska, lurking in the shadows, ambushing our wild salmon and trout. Many South Central lakes and streams are already empty of everything but the killer, northern pike. Soon many of our sport fishing opportunities may be gone. Uh, northern pike are a long-lived, hardy, voracious species of fish that predates the Ice Age. Northern pike can attain lengths of well over 50 inches and weights of up to 40 to 45 pounds. Northern pike are a long-lived species and can live up to 30 years. These predators are, are ambush predators, they're camouflage. They hide in the weeds real well. Their eyeballs are almost like a dog, kind of facing towards the front, and uh, that's, that's their mode of operation. They just wait in the weeds and dart out real quick and grab something. They feed on uh, just about anything that swims, and so they would quickly uh, eliminate any native species in the lake, start eating themselves, and then, then become stunted. Uh, to the point where you'd have a very poor quality fishery. Northern pike are important subsistence and sport fish in their native range, but they do not naturally occur in South Central Alaska and pose a threat to our native fisheries. In interior Alaska and in western Alaska, um, wherever there's shallow, slow moving water, you're going to find a lot of pike there. But there's also a lot of deep, large lake systems, and if pike occur there, they're in the shallow fringes. Uh, or in the slow moving waters and there's a different fish assemblage present in the deeper waters. Essentially other fish can avoid being preyed on by seeking out the deep water refuge. In South Central the places where we have the most problems tend to be areas that are shallow and weedy throughout and there's complete overlap for rearing salmonids and the northern pike. The expansion of northern pike from their native areas is a direct result of illegal introductions during the 1950s and their subsequent natural movement following introduction. Northern pipe are established in uh, some of the uh, landlocked lakes and, and, po and pond areas um, through illegal introductions. Probably anglers that are fishing pike in, in other areas are bringing pike into those systems and inadvertently or on purpose releasing pike into those systems. A lot of people say that northern pike may uh, be introduced to systems by uh, eggs sticking to duck feet and animals and that type of things and other types of birds, but I don't really buy into that. If that were true, northern pike would have been in these systems thousands and thousands of years ago. About two decades after the initial introduction of the Matanuska Susitna Valley, northern pike were discovered on the Kenai Peninsula. What we found in these lakes are like Dirks Lake, uh, Savina Lake, uh, East and West Mackey's Lake, uh, all these lakes in the Sladotna Creek drainages. It, we used to have really good, pretty much trophy rainbow trout fisheries in a number of these lakes. And uh, once we got pike in here, it was just within a few years they couldn't find any rainbow trout at all. There were large rainbows uh, that would uh, uh, surface and start jumping after flies and whatnot during the day, and so we would uh, throw down the hammers and grab the fishing rods and, and uh, go catch a few rainbows and turn them back and release them. Well, outrageous. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't throw a hook in without having a rainbow on it. I mean, big ones too. This is the last fish I got, rainbow I caught in here. I went down and catch one for breakfast off the dock. And that's it. My wife had him mounted for me. Northern pike not only impact fisheries, they also impact individuals and businesses. In the Matanuska Susitna Valley, Alexander Creek is one of the areas hardest hit by the illegal introduction of invasive northern pike. Alexander Creek used to be a multi-million dollar sport fish industry supporting nine lodges, um, a good share of uh, three or four of the major charter operations out of Lake Hood and now all that's gone. The main economy used to be the fishing lodges and uh, when they closed the king salmon season, uh, all of the fishing lodges have closed. So there is essentially no economy left at Alexander Creek. You know, in the 80s was the peak of the king fishing for Alexander Creek. Business was booming. Um, fishing was excellent. And um, when the 90s came, um, we started seeing a big difference. We started noticing uh, in the early 90s, we started, people started catching pike here and there. 
competition started to slow down. Now it's a more of a you know place to go hang out on the weekends, more so than a real fishing area, which it used to be. We like I said, we had there was probably ten outfitters on the river at when it was really good fishing. And now there is nobody. People are trying to sell their places that wanted to run that type of lifestyle. They've either sold their places or just stopped, stopped doing business. There are things that agencies can do to either control or eradicate northern pike populations in South Central. The Fish and Wildlife Service, through its Aquatic Invasive Species Pro Program, tries to help in a number of ways. We provide funding to our partners at the Alaska Department of Fish and Game to implement their invasive pike management plan in South Central Alaska. Well, first and foremost, we're really trying to get the word out that northern pike are an invasive species in South Central and that introducing them is both illegal and very damaging to our fisheries. In addition, we're trying to control populations where we can. The idea is to really drive down the pike population and try to give the salmon populations a chance to rebound. And then in other cases, we're actually trying to eradicate entire populations and we've done so successfully on several occasions using a chemical called rotenone. Rotenone has been successfully used around the world with no long-term effect to the environment. Rotenone is a naturally occurring a chemical substance. It comes from the roots of tropical plants in the bean family. It's been used uh, by fisheries managers since about the 1930s to remove unwanted and invasive fish. Um, it is easily absorbed through the thin tissue layer of the gill membranes in, in fish and other gilled organisms, and that's why it's so highly effective with them. Um, mammals, birds, humans, we don't have this rapid absorption route into our bloodstream. Rotenone is used in very, very small concentrations. Once it's mixed into a lake, it's at only about 1 20th of one part per million, so that's a really small amount. It doesn't bioaccumulate, and it can break down relatively quickly. The severity of the northern pike problem varies across south central Alaska. In the Matsu, northern pike have been present longer and are more widespread than other areas of South Central, where introductions are more recent. If the question is, can we eradicate the pike in the uh, Susitna uh, system up there, I think the answer would be no. I, I think that's probably too lofty of a goal. Um, should we go in and try to control the pike populations uh, to allow continued coexistence between the salmon and the northern pike, I believe that's a strategy that can work. We've had adult weirs established in 17 different rearing lakes up there, out of the 24 lakes in Mississippi drainage. And on 11 of those lakes uh, are known to have northern pike in them, like 11 out of the uh, 17. And out of the 11 that have pike in them, we found uh, five that have no more adult salmon returning at all, and four that have uh, substantially reduced sockeye salmon escapements of less than a thousand fish. On the Kenai Peninsula, we believe northern pike can be successfully eradicated if we prevent further introductions and continue management efforts. I think uh, on the Kenai Peninsula, we're very fortunate. We're kind of on a teeter-totter right now. You know, we only have 16 or so water bodies that we know that pike occur. We have an opportunity to assess the situation and, and to uh, control the, the, the pike in areas where we, where we know they occur. Since uh, fishing game has been netting the bigger pike, we now have the ducks and the loons, but to have trout jumping and you know, more of the natural fish in the lake, I think it'd just bring it more alive to us. You can help. If you catch a northern pike in a water body where they are not known to exist, or you observe someone illegally introducing northern pike, call the Alaska Department of Fish and Game Invasive Species Hotline or go to the website. <laughs>